I made this thing which senses electromagnetic fields and draws them. This is the first in my I made this series. Um, I thought I'd start out with maybe the most dense project ever. Um, it's a lot of electronics and coding, but it's also super cool. This is a project I made for the physical computing module of my masters. Um, and you could basically do anything. It just needed to have at least one input, at least one output and have a proper enclosure. I decided that my input would be electromagnetic fields uh, because I actually have magnets in my fingers. Uh, so I thought I'd make use of them. You just press the button and then move your magnet around and you should be able to see some correlation between your movement and what is going on in the screen. Ooh, what's happening there? This is a fun color palette, this one. Now take it away, Charlotte from the past. My project is pretty simple. It has two inputs and one output. And that's because a lot of the clever stuff is gonna happen on the side of the screen. What I have is this thing, which is called a magnetometer and accelerometer. Basically it can give out readings for the most powerful magnetic pull and it can tell you kind of which way it's oriented. And then I also have a little blue LED and a tiny button. So I've hooked these things up to a breadboard where you can kind of like demo your circuits and an Arduino and plugged it into my computer. All I've done so far is written a program which basically sends this information into somewhere on my machine that I can pick up with other programs inside my machine. In like technical terms, this is sending serial data as encoded JSON um, to a port and then I'm gonna use JavaScript probably in Node on my computer to interpret that information and then display it in loads of pretty ways using a Canvas WebGL thing. So now I wanna talk a bit about the enclosure I'm gonna make for this thing. As you can see right now, it's mocked up on a breadboard, which if you remember like GCSE physics has, a, has a horizontal lines underneath connecting them and also runs running up the side. So it's really easy to kind of prototype stuff. So my main sensor runs to, um, two pieces here on the Arduino, and then it also runs to power and ground. My LED is running through one digital pin and to uh, through a resistor to ground. And my button is also running through a digital pin um, and connecting to both ground and power with a resistor so it doesn't blow up. Obviously this is like dumb and ugly. So what I'm gonna do eventually, once I've done it all, is I'm gonna put all these components on here. This stuff is called perf board. It's kind of halfway between a breadboard and like a printed circuit board, which is what like consumer electronics come in. So basically I can take my component and slot it on here because the pins are the same distance apart as they are on the Arduino. Um, and then I can solder it in and I can basically run lines of solder along these to connect the parts. So when I put these components down, it's gonna look something like this. That's the plan. And then because conveniently this perf board fits the size of the Arduino, I mean, that's going to run on. I'm basically going to just have it slot straight on to the place that I want it to. So I'm going to end up with something that looks kind of like this. And I was told I need to make a case for it. I currently have like open access to a laser cutter, which is like the best thing in the world. So earlier I went and laser cut some stuff. Um, I've got it in like a chunky black and I've got it in like a cool live edge yellow, which is just the most fun thing ever. Uh, my plan I think is to use the black for the top and then all of the these like yellow walls for the sides. I kind of get to a point like that where I've built up this wall um, and then I use this thing, which I've engraved this X on and have two holes. So the holes are for like the LED and the button. So in theory, that goes on like that. And then I'll also use a couple of these little live edge ones for the proper button press. It does look pretty snazzy, I'm quite happy with it. And then you just end up connecting this with the USB port. What I'm gonna do now is concentrate on the code and make this button affect this light and also send a signal to my other server to say, hey, record this and use this information. I turned my camera off for like a minute. I was using this stuff, plastic weld, the classic plastic weld to glue together this stuff. And I literally just spilled half a bottle of it all over the table uh, because my syringe broke. And now I'm gonna die from the fumes. I'm gonna die, for, I'm gonna die from the fumes. And I also, I just grabbed one of my favorite t-shirts to fix it with an, oh, ah! Then I just, then I dropped that and got the t-shirt fumes in my face, which is really bad because this says, avoid contact with skin and eyes. Do not inhale harmful, irrigate well with water. It's got a, it's got a, it's got a pretty solid cross on it. Um, ow, that really hurt my eyes. Why did I put that up to my face? I mean, now these are stuck together, so something's come out of this. Um, maybe a couple years of my life.
After not too much struggle, I did manage to get the button and the light to work together, but I thought the LED was too bright, so I decided to go with a super strong resistor to make a really dim effect. So what I've learned in the past hour or so is that I just don't know a lot about circuits. I thought, hey, well, I can just assemble it on the breadboard and then I can just transfer it to this perf board and it'll be fine. But I didn't think about the fact that, like with PCBs, you have to have it arranged in a way that none of the wires cross, which is really obvious. Obviously the problems arise when I like, know I need the components in this arrangement because I've already laser cut the chassis. This is what I've been doing, drawing out diagrams and then just like crossing shit out and being like, I just don't know. I've kind of got it to a point where I only have to have one thing crossover, which isn't the end of the world because this, since this is gonna be sitting like on top of the Arduino, I have a bit of like space underneath. This is how the pieces are laid out. So the magnetometer's here, LED's there, the button's there. These are the two resistors. And then here and here are gonna be the pins that have to hook up to like here and there. And then over here we have these, two pins need to hook up to there and there. And here and here are gonna be like ground and five volts. And they need to hook up the opposite way around right here, which is quite annoying. And they, and ground has to link up to here and here. And five volts also has to link up to like here. So that probably doesn't make any sense to you. Like it barely makes sense to me. And that's the reason I've decided to do this whole like soldering thing before I do like the programming and the fun bit because I know I won't run into too many problems with that and this just everything could go wrong. So at this point I was super nervous that my circuit diagram just wasn't going to be right. I had ground hooked up in a different way to how I had it on the breadboard and because I know nothing about electronics I was worried that it just wasn't going to work but I decided to just go ahead and start soldering anyway. Turns out that soldering electronics is so much easier than like I'm used to soldering jewellery and soldering jewellery is like a skill. You have to know when it's going to melt and like if it's going to melt and how it's going to flow. With electronics it just it just melts. I know that's the point but it's just Ah, I didn't have any trouble at all. I started by soldering on the head pins and then put all the components down and I used a pretty random combination of like insulated wires and plain copper wires and solder bridges, um, just whatever worked. The thing that's terrifying is that now this is all like properly soldered down, which means that if I've done something wrong, it's really hard for me to fix it. And the likelihood of me having done something wrong considering this is my first electronics project, um, really high. On the upside, successful slotting into the Arduino and it also does fit in the case. So that's a win. Um, yeah, it's just like a big question mark of whether this is actually gonna, gonna run. <sighs> of course it didn't run. I spent about two hours trying to debug it with loads of different methods, which culminated in me literally shorting the USB port of my computer. So I decided to call it a night um, and take it to work the next morning instead. So I went to bed a bit dejected, a bit like, I don't know what's wrong with it and I'm just gonna break it more. But luckily I work at a place where like half of the employees are engineers. So I took it in and had a couple friends look at it um, and they said it looked like it was fine, like it should work based on the schema. And then we took out a multimeter to like test each part of it. When I uploaded the sketch this morning, uh, the magnetometer was actually giving out readings. So it was just the light and the button. And it turned out that the light was actually on. It was just like so dim because I put in that strong resistor. And then after a lot of poking about, we found the problem with the button. I wanna see if I can show you it. Basically this join right here isn't connected, which is equivalent to this one here not being connected to that one there, which is why the button wasn't working. So I soldered up that joint and replaced the resistor with a slightly weaker one I found at work, and miraculously, it all worked. I am so into this. So with the electronics a go, uh, it was time to start working on the enclosure. I ended up layering the black and yellow together wasp style, so it would be the perfect height from the table that I didn't need to have a backing on it, and it looked pretty snazzy. Hello, quite a few hours have passed now at Casa de Charlotte. It's far too late. Anyway, I think I've almost finished. So here is the, oh, I didn't glue the button on. Right, not finished, still need to glue this button on. In the midst of all of this, I actually had to replace the switch because in gluing the top, and gluing the little pressy bit onto it, I like screwed up the switch and it wasn't working. It was a real pain, but we can get over that. Now I'm gonna show you it working. You might be able to see at the corner of the screen, things are happening. So in short, how this works is that each time you turn it on, it picks a new color palette. Um, the way that's chosen is basically I have a array, like a list of attractive hues. Um, basically if you pick anywhere on the rainbow, it tends to look pretty ugly, but I have this array that picks kind of 
fewer oranges, more kind of like mints and fuchsias and blues and it's just it's just like a nice curated set of hues um, and then it picks any it picks between two and five of them um, and then ranges the brightness between like 50% and 100% um, it's all like fully saturated and then that's basically the scope with which the Z axis works um, and the Z axis also controls the radius yes so X and Y are actually X and Y um, although that's how they correspond on the actual thing is quite different because obviously it's 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 facing magnetic north but if a negative side of a magnet is there then it does the opposite um, but there is like quite a distinct correlation between those when you turn it on it kind of normalizes whatever the magnetic field is there as the exact middle of the screen so like when I did this it was on like the magnetic field was based on the left so I could never go too far left it's really cool and it's surprising how well this has come together considering like an hour ago I didn't have anything that I was really happy with visually and now this is great like I can do another another demo. It's very frustrating because I feel like I have control over it but I also know I don't. It's one of those quite intuitive things where like if you think about it it doesn't make any sense but the more you just kind of like let it happen the easier it is and that's just left a really attractive picture. The idea is if you step away from it, it kind of goes back into whatever the normal was, so it'll just end up in the middle anyway. Oh, that's nice, and screenshot that. This is like a genuinely successful project. It's actually worked out really well. Hell yeah, Pa Charlotte. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, sorry, it was a little bit long. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them to me in the comments, and I will leave a link to the GitHub repo of this project where you'll find all the code for the stuff I've made um, and the designs and a couple of instructions, I think. And I will make something else soon.